So this lesson we're talking about assumptions and conversions again. So an assumption is something that you're going to be using a lot for definitely for this project, but also um, just in the future. So an assumption in general is a thing that's taken as true. Um, the dictionary calls it a thing that's accepted as true or as certain to happen without proof. In our case, an assumption is something that we're going to take as, pr as true uh, for the purposes of performing calculations. So for instance, um, an example that I usually use is boiling water. So when you say that you're boiling water, you're assuming at sea level. Okay, so here's a mountain, da da da, and this is the ocean. Water boils at a different temperature at the, like at sea level than it does in the mountains. And the reason is, let me write this down. The reason is, is that um, there's less pressure up on a mountain. The reason water stays in a liquid form or the reason anything stays in a liquid form is that it's got enough pressure that it doesn't escape into gassy form or into gas form. So you have all this weight of the atmosphere pushing down on the water and in order to escape that, you have to have you have to raise the energy. Well, normally at sea level, water boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Pretty sure that's. I think I remembered that right. Yeah. So, but that's at sea level. That's at sea level. You've got all this air pushing down, and the amount of energy that it takes for the for the water to go from a liquid to a gas and to escape that pressure happens at 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, at the top of a mountain. Um, you're a whole lot higher. So you have less pressure, right? Because if you think about it, like let's say this is the Earth. Probably should have done that a different color, but okay. So here we've got some land. We've got some more land. We've got some land over here. We've got some water in between there. Well, around the, air, around the Earth, we have our, our atmosphere, right? So like let's say this is our atmosphere. Well, if we zoom in closer, then at sea level, you can see that there's this much pressure, that much weight of the air pushing down. Well, at a mountain, you don't have as much. So, like, say this is a mountain. Notice that the difference from the outer edge of the atmosphere to the top of this mountain is it's a much smaller area, so you've got a lot less air pushing down. As a result, um, it, it doesn't take as much energy for water to escape a liquid form and turn into a gas form. So at the top of a mountain, water boils at a lower temperature. And it's not like one <clears throat> it's not like one set temperature. The higher you go, the lower the temperature is. So like if you're at the top of Mount Everest, your water wouldn't have to be very hot at all to be boiling. <clears throat> at sea level, it it has a whole lot more air pressure on it. So it boils at 212 degrees. So if you're talking about a study that involves boiling water, one of your assumptions would be, like, you have to pick a temperature, right? Because the temperature is different depending on where you are. So when you list out your assumptions, which you usually do, because your assumptions kind of protect you from people trying to tear up your work, right? So anytime you do any kind of calculations, like outside of school or in college, you're always going to list your assumptions. And in this case, we're going to assume sea level. Now what that says is, okay, we're at sea level, our water is going to boil at 212 degrees. So that's what, something we would list out as our assumptions. We would also do the same thing like for gravity. So normally we would say, okay, well gravity is like 9.1, uh, sorry, 9.81, 9.8 meters per second squared, right? Meters per second per second. So, again, that kind of depends on elevation. <clears throat> so, in our assumptions, I would probably list gravity is this. Um, of course, since I'm using 212 degrees Fahrenheit, I would probably make this not metric, but that would be one of our assumptions. So, your assumptions, when we're doing our project for, like, our Fermi project, your assumptions are going to be the things that are going to make your project work. So, for instance... Let's say that your project is you want to know how many baseballs will fit inside of 
a specific cube or like a classroom or something? Well, if we were going to calculate how many baseballs would fit in a classroom, we would need to know a few things. First of all, um, there are different size baseballs, right? So our first assumption would be standard MLB size baseballs. So that gives us our dimensions. We would write those down. We're going to assume the classroom is empty, so no desks. We're going to assume that um, that these balls are not compressible, so we're not going to, like, if you have a bunch squished together. Uh, I'm trying to copy and paste. Okay, there we go. They're not going to squish down flat just because you pile them in. So, like, they'll be like that. So baseball is not compressible. We're also going to need to assume a standard classroom size, or, or the dimensions of the classroom anyway. It doesn't have to be standard. So we've measured it in the past, and this is kind of a rough estimate. I'm going to say, because our classroom is kind of weird. We have a bunch of different like columns and, and cutouts that are kind of along the wall. But we're going to assume the classroom dimensions are 41 feet by 32 feet. And we're assuming that the ceiling is nine feet tall. So we would assume those dimensions. Because otherwise, if you don't have these dimensions here, then somebody could come along and go, OK, well, you got this many baseballs, but what about this? And what about that? And, and what if the classroom was, was a different shape or whatever? So if you list out the things that you used, then people can go, OK, well, I see. OK, so you said your classroom was 41 by 32 by 9. OK, I get it now. So your assumptions kind of back up your calculations. They're kind of like. They're kind of like your justifications for why your calculations work. So that way it makes them kind of um, where people can't tear them apart. So that's our assumptions. The only other thing that I was going to talk about real quick was conversions. And we've done this before, so I'm going to make this really quick. OK, so in this case, we have this volume of this. This is like a classroom or a block or whatever. Well, our volume for, for a cube like this is length times width times height. Um, We'll talk about other volumes if we need to, but this is what we're looking at right now. Um, I guess I should give you a, a sphere. So a sphere, which is like, you know, like a, a ball, this volume would be 4 thirds pi r cubed, where, you know, your r is your radius. But OK, so let's say you have a volume, and we need to, we're going to be changing back and forth between units. That one's going to be important. So let's say you had. Let's say your classroom is 41 feet by 32 feet by 9 feet. Well, if we multiply that out, we're going to get feet cubed. This is 11,808 feet cubed, which seems like a lot. But we're comparing things that are smaller. So like um, maybe your Fermi question is how many Rubik's cubes would fit in the classroom? Or a Rubik's cube is going to be measured in inches. So you're going to either have to convert from inches to feet, or you're going to have to convert from feet to inches. So we're going to do the conversions, but it's not just feet and inches, right? It's now feet cubed. Well, we know already that one foot is 12 inches. But we can't just take our 11,808 and multiply by 12, because that's only handled one of our feet. So I'm going to do the little this thing again. I'm going to put several in there this time. And the first one, I'm going to have 11,808. Feet cubed is really feet times feet times feet. So I'm going to put that in. I'm going to move this over slightly. There we go. Times feet times feet, right? Because this is feet cubed. So when I convert, I'm going to have to convert three times because I want to get rid of all of the feet. So I'm going to go, OK, 12 inches up here is one foot. That handle is this one. Now I'm going to do it again. I'm going to go 12 inches up here is one foot. And notice I'm putting foot in the bottom so that it'll cancel. I do it one more time. I do, because I have one more left, I go 12 inches up here is one foot down here. This foot cancels with that foot. So now all the feet are gone from the 11808. We've got these three inches up top. 
So then all we have to do then is multiply it out. So if we multiply it out, we're going to get a really big number. So we're going to go 11,808 times 12 times 12 times 12. So we get 20, and I'm kind of cheating. I have the calculator. Also, my stylus just ran out. Should have charged that. Okay, 20404224. So that's like 20,404,224 inches cubed. And it's a really big number, but that's okay. It is what it is. So that's our final answer. So our volume of the classroom then would be 20 million something inches cubed. So when we're converting, converting these things, just make sure you take care of all of the exponents and not just one.